Hello everybody, John here. And today on To The Garage, it's a very unusual video. Um, it's actually a, a bit of a sad video, if I'm honest. So many of you have followed me from the beginning on To The Garage, uh, all our exploits. And the key to it all has been this motor car, PJ, my XK8, which I've had for nine years now. Um, PJ, because it stands for pride and joy. And uh, my wife nicknamed that, uh, give it that nickname, and it's stuck because it's true. And this is a car that you've heard me talk about on video many times, I love. However, um, I'm pretty cool when it comes to mechanical things, interior things, I'll have a stab at electrical things. But bodywork stretches me. And whilst I'm more than prepared to take the angle grinder and some spray paint to our T25 with its flat panels and flat paint, um, Jaguar is a little bit different. It needs professional work to get it right. And I've been coming to the conclusion over the last few weeks that it's running away from me a little bit. The car has always had a few minor defects, I've never really minded, but it's starting to pick up some corrosion that I'm not happy to leave alone. And if we're honest, it's uneconomical for me to get somebody else to do it for me. Um, I've got blisters on the rear arches in all the standard places. Uh, the floor plans do need replacing in the driver's side, the passenger side, but it's a little bit of work as well. There's a lot of cosmetic and bodywork things that need coming up. Upshot is it does need an entire respray and a lot of bodywork, love and attention. And I can't do it myself. And at commercial rates, to be fair, I just can't afford to do it myself. It's, it's not a viable proposition. So, brace yourselves, I've sold PJ. Uh, this is the last time you'll see it on film. We might see a few little clips of it because obviously I've got a lot of footage for other um, secrets, etc. But this is included in. Um, so, you know, I'll make a few more films. You might see the odd image, but today's its last day, really. It's being sold to somebody who's going to look after it. In fact, who is going to restore it properly. They have the facilities, the skills and the care to restore this properly. And when it's finished, I may be very regretful because I will no doubt see the car again in about four months time um, when somebody else has lavished some real care, attention, money on it. But it's cheaper for them because they know what they're doing. For me, it's just not viable. Very, very sad day. So, for all the wrong reasons, really, I thought I'd take today as an opportunity to share um, not so much some secrets as some advice for XK8 buyers. I've been asked lots of times for a buyer's guide. Um, so, today I thought I'd just look at what to look for in terms of common places for bodywork issues related with the XK8. Um, we've covered a few in our secrets videos, the corrosion traps, etc. But let's have a look at some of the um, bits and pieces that are um, forcing my hand a little bit with PJ. So, here we go. First thing to look at is the nose cone. The nose cone is a plastic element whereas the rest of the bodywork is steel so the first thing um, that you can notice and this is normal for these vehicles rather than a fault um, on my car it's actually pretty good i've got to say but there is very commonly a transition in color between the steel bodywork bonnet and the plastic bodywork bumper um, they are sprayed separately which is relatively unusual um, the 
plastic work needs different priming to the bodywork, and so they came together later in the journey rather than being sprayed at the same time. Doors are sprayed off the car, but they live with the car and travel with it while it's being sprayed. So you do get this very, very subtle mismatch in colours between the two elements. Partly because different treatment, different material, um, different primer. Partly just because batch differences. Um, metallics are very, very hard to get right. If you ever tried to respray a metallic car with a rattle can, you'll know that you can tell which way you were waving the, the can, that the, the metallic stands a different way. Um, so you're matching two items together that were sprayed at different times potentially. Um, so you can get this color transition. I can tell it's there because I was on the line at, um, at the time they were spraying some of these cars and you know I know what to look for. But on mine it's very, very subtle. On some cars, occasionally you will see quite a uh, obvious mis mismatch. Um, stone damage to the lacquer on the nose cones is an inevitability with these cars. Um, realistically, they don't have a bumper in the cosmetic sense of the word. The front of the car is the front of the car, so bodywork is the first thing that gets uh, hit by stones. And they are very low at the front, and this is really, really common. Luckily, you can obviously detach the nose cone, and it is one of the items that can be resprayed separately. It was in the first place, so um, having a separate blowover on the nose is not uncommon. The fog lights on Mark 1s particularly are very vulnerable to stone damage because they've got this very distinctive look, this sort of nostril. The lens, the glass, is full flat on to any approaching stones and so if they hit it they do tend to go bang. The later cars, this is flush and they do bounce stones off rather better so that's something to look for. Low down, uh, you have this very unusual front um, spoiler. Uh, people think it's a mud flap, but obviously it's on the wrong side of the wheel. It's in front of the wheel. Um, it's to deflect airflow um, and improve the handling of the car at speed, reduce nose lift, all sorts of things. Um, without it, you would probably be hard pushed as average Joe to tell the difference but it does have uh, a reason for being and very often those are broken off because they are so low um, if I give you a bit of a judgment there there's my fist which is what four inches maybe so it's very easy to clip on curbs when parking so they can be broken off lots of people like to transform XK8s into XKR alikes by changing out the grill Mine has always looked like this, so it's not got this particular issue, but worth sharing, it's, it's very common. Um, so if they, if they get changed over to have the mesh grill, the bunny teeth have to go, um, which is their proper name, by the way. <laughs> the, uh, the blade has to go, which is the E-type-esque element. And behind it is this, it's not glass fibre, but it's a fibre plastic um, crash structure. And inside the bunny teeth, there is two, <coughs> excuse me, raised square sections. They get sawn off by most people doing the conversion to an XK8 grill. And whilst that doesn't do the car any harm and it's not going to corrode and all the rest of it, um, if you wanted to change it back to original, uh, very difficult to do professionally and it won't look quite right. So. Just bear in mind, if you pick one up with a really cheap and nasty mesh grill on and you think, don't, don't worry, I'll pick up a blade and some bunny teeth, put it back to standard, might not be as easy as you think. Bonnets, obviously, homage to the E-Type, gorgeous. This raised hump is straight out of the E-Type. Beautiful, beautiful thing. But big, relatively flat, um, 
they're easy to dent. Mine, hard to show up on camera, has a wrinkle just here. See if I rotate myself around, you can probably, there you go. You can see it where something's been dropped on it once upon a time. And that's been there for a very long time. Almost managed to forget it some days, but there it is. The trims on the windscreen frame are aluminium. But on almost all models, they are sprayed Dorchester grey metallic, um, which is the same colour as the plinth for your wing, wing mirrors. Um, these tend to shed their paint. There we go. And that's basically what aluminium corrosion will do. They get a tiny, tiny defect. Water gets under the paint, you get aluminium corrosion, which is a white furry stuff, lifts the plane top and it cracks. Um, once I took a bit of a hose pipe to my car, washed off near the top, and that happened. Um, that looked fine <laughs> until it all flaked off. Um, now, obviously if you're competent enough, you can mask these things up and respray them yourselves, give them a rub down. But the trims and seals are hard to get if you want to replace. They are very expensive. And so you should take that into um, mind when buying a car. If you're going to buy one that's more than um, 15 years old, you know, it's not going to be perfect. You've got to accept that. Um, but these are not the quick, easy fix that you might imagine. If I look along my side, you can see, if you look closely, on the pit in there, and the rubber has started to move away from it. Whoops. <clears throat> you can also see some previous repairs. Again, metallic hard to touch up um, where it's starting to degrade. Uh, pretty much unavoidable as I said but worth bearing in mind and certainly a negotiation point when looking at a car like this. The sills are actually usually pretty decent on these cars because they're one of the earlier cars to have stone chip paint applied under their top coat right from the factory so that means they're better protected than most cars of this sort of age unfortunately halfway along the sill there is a seam and seams are bad things i mean i've got a volkswagen t25 and all about seams uh, again on mine not looking too shabby but there is a little blister starting to appear there and that's all to do with there being a join and somewhere underneath water starting to be able to get in. This is the rear wheel arch, front of the wheel. And here you can start to see the real issues. So this return has started to corrode. Again, very typical of cars this age but you actually get used get used on particularly British salted roads and you can see the sort of damage that's occurred this return has also been dressed at some stage um, and what that means is it used to be that thick all the way around and it's been cut back to remove the damaged metal probably treated um, but tin worm has started to catch up again. PJ is actually fine in this regard, but there's a front wheel arch liner. But when you get to the bottom of the wheel arch liner, there's a water trap there, if you like. Um, it's okay for water, it runs down and away from us, but collects stones and mud and can rot out that section very, very easily indeed. Originally, cars would have been body coloured all the way down here and along this blade. So, 
that line there tells us that it's been overdressed at some time in its past but nothing much to worry about that's pretty common particularly if the car's been um, under sealed as I barted they do that as a matter of course just to improve matters so again front wheel behind the front wheel um, I'm rolling the camera onto its back and looking straight up under the car so that's a cross brace literally a big cross of metal that goes underneath the convertible and uh, helps to brace everything um, if you come back from that bolt can't get the camera further away for obvious reasons uh, what we've got here is a square pressing welded to the bottom of the car I say square it's not perfectly square and you can see that's pretty T scabby um, heavily damaged this is incredibly common so we're looking at the driver's footwell floor in essence this 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 panel here we can just about see the edges of literally does nothing it was attached to the bottom of the car in the factory when it was being built and when it was moving along the production line there were cups on the moving assembly line which held this panel this shape and it dropped into that and it aligned it and positioned it on the production line so this is purely there like the cups on the bottom of a stillage or a pallet to move the vehicle along a production line when it had no wheels on but it's welded to the floor of the car and creates a gap between this and this that in turn means you are going to um, get a moisture trap and that causes them to rot out some cars have had these removed very good idea underneath the car is the tailpipe and um, if you look just above the tailpipe there's this aluminium structure that's the thing that the rear bumper is mounted to and these can corrode very very badly um, as can the area they're attached there's another little element on the side here and between them those two elements basically carry your rear. So, still at the back corner of the car. If you are uh, looking up, um, here, now this is non standard exhaust hanger because I've got non standard exhausts. But um, if you're in the right area for your exhaust hanger, which is normally bolted there and there and just sticks out here, um, look in this area. Now, that is, there's no such thing as a chassis on a XK8, but it's kind of like a chassis rail. So it's a little bit of bodywork. That's just undercoat flaking off, but um, that's quite corroded and is a place that these things do get a lot of damage so again if you're negotiating a car have a look there either a reason to walk away or at least a reason to reduce the price so you can get some work done so that's the back corner of the car just forward of the exhausts Inside of the rear wheel arches, common place for corrosion. And if you look along the outer edge, you're looking for tiny blisters like that. And that's the first signs of corrosion starting to break through on your rear wheel arches. Um, there's a much more obvious one 
here on mine and rather horrendous one slide back so I'll just give you a view there's the rear bumper so if I slide back along that panel oh dear give you the scale of that um, and of course that's just the stuff you can see it's uh, splitting the paint and what my car will need is all of this to be cut out and a new piece of metal let in and it's quite expensive and when it's done it'll be perfect <laughs> um, same on the rear corner this is a typical place for these cars to corrode and not so much on mine but on a lot of cars there's a close gap between the plastic bumper and the metal work just here and the bumpers as we've described can become rather detached from the car as that mounting corrodes and you get this moving and chattering it starts to wear away at the paint and once that happens you get corrosion here as well in this little water trap You look down, again okay, into the rear wheel arch, front edge of, you see the damage here. This is exacerbated by me having a look to see just how bad things were recently. And there is a shelf inside the rear wheel arch. Let's see if we can get focus. There we go. Which is a seam in the bodywork. And again, on mine, not too bad, but this can collect all sorts of rubbish. And if it punctures the under seal, then that can give you real grief too. Some cars have tiny, tinny side steps. These things have really nice, substantial ones. Um, and they also have a double seal door, which means you've got a felt trim here. Uh, then you've got a rubber seal that hits on here and another one that hits on here. And so with the right conditions, particularly on a convertible, you can get water running down. It's kind of trapped in here. And you can see this, uh, focus again. There we go. Beginnings of something. It's only a bit of surface rust at the moment. But there where it's got trapped and got stuck underneath that panel. This is a problem with two door coupes rather than the XK8, but they have very long doors to enable access to the rear um, so look out for damage that's been caused over the years when these knock things mine have been dressed and touched up many times and although i've never knocked it the paint started to uh, flake off i think actually it might have been polished off if i'm absolutely honest because it's uh, it's not right it's not original look in your door jams for damage like that that's years and years old but this is very typical of uh, a car that's had that trapped in its door and again reasonably common thing uh, car that's maybe not been um, carefully used over the years that um, you jump out real quick the seat belt is a little lazy doesn't retract properly you slam the door that gets caught and you get all sorts of weird embossed damage like that there's another one here low down on mine you can see it's a very small dent the light is making it look a lot worse than it is uh, with a little bit of bare metal in the bottom. That will be exactly the same thing. That will be a seatbelt buckle or part of the seatbelt that has just got trapped in the door. Now, an unusual one. This is the very complex seals at the back edge of the driver's door. 
applies both equally to both sides. This is uh, not really a fault, as in my car's bad or anything like that. This is typical of XK8s, particularly early ones. And you can see that it is rubbed straight through there. When the door closes, it touches this equally very complex and bespoke seal here. And one rubs the other away. And it's exacerbated by the fact that the windows go like so. And when this is being pushed back, um, the window saws its way through the seal. So yeah, it's a, it's a little fault on this vehicle, but it is typical. It's not a problem with this vehicle. And you're very lucky if you don't have seals that look like that. Just something to look at. So that's the uh, end of an era. It's a very sad day. Um, Thank you that we've had for eight years and it's given us lots and lots of fun. Um, but it is time to say goodbye. So thank you everybody for watching this. Um, I've enjoyed sharing my exploits for the XK8 so much with you all. And um, thanks for watching. Sad, sad day. So that's that then, folks. Or is it? Ta da! I bought another car. Um, for today, just the quickest possible of intros, um, myself and Joe have just collected this from a fabulous garage we've been talking to for a while, and that's Town and Country Cars in Cleethorpes. Huge thanks to Dean and Mark for looking after us so much. I highly recommend you check out their stock, go and look at what they've got. They're, uh, they're into their classics, they're definitely into their Jags, and they're into uh, restoring things. And the car that I've bought is a 1996, so even earlier than PJ, XK8 Sport. It's one of the first 1500 cars ever made. And for that reason, it's got a few quirks and features that are a little different to your average early XK8. And it's painted in pearlescent aquamarine. So, for this episode of To The Garage, that's a wrap. <laughs>